Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I will go through the pros and cons of the Surface Pro 9 of last year to help you decide if it's still worth it in 2024 to save yourself some money instead of paying for the latest model that you might not need. So I will tell you what I liked, what's average, and what I didn't like in this 2-in-1 Surface Pro 9. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the good things. Number one, the design and build quality. Microsoft nailed this 2-in-1 design for a long time, which I like. And it's exactly the same design of the just announced Surface Pro 10, so you are not missing anything here. But let me talk about the specifics. From my experience, the built-in stand is the most interesting thing about the Surface Pro lineup, which has many advantages. It gives you the ability to place it on any desk like a laptop without the need to buy a case like other tablets, and if you prefer to use a full-size keyboard or a proper mouse like me, then you can skip buying the detachable keyboard, use whatever peripherals you have, and save yourself some cash. It also gives you the flexibility to place it in much more angles when compared to other tablets that require a case, thanks to its amazing hinge that can be freely adjusted at any position while still holding the device quite well, regardless where you stop. Plus, it has a big range, so you can push it all the way down to get the perfect angle for touch input or using the surface pin. Lastly, it's directly attached to the device instead of using magnets and it's made of metal. So its build quality is very solid and no matter how much pressure you put on it, this thing is not going anywhere which means you can rest your hand while using the touch screen with a peace of mind. Moving to the build quality with no doubt it's very solid and it can last for years thanks to its metal chassis and the premium materials used everywhere. So every time I hold it, I really enjoy how it feels in hand. And lastly, the power and volume rockers at the top are very handy which gives you a tablet-like experience even though it's technically a Windows PC. Number 2, the display. This is one of the strengths of the Surface Pro 9 for many reasons and this is still good enough for 2024. It has thin bezels so it doesn't look dated and not far behind this year's model. But what I like the most is the colors. Microsoft did an amazing job in calibrating the display to give accurate and vibrant colors when I compare it to my Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3 laptop, it's a day and night difference. Plus you get 120Hz refresh rate which is as good as high-end mobile phones when it comes to scrolling or gaming. The resolution and the brightness are also great. It's a 2880 by 1920 which is 267 pixels per inch and 450 nits peak brightness. When you compare this to the latest M3 MacBook Air, the Surface Pro 9 gives you 43 more pixels per inch, but 50 nits lower brightness which is very similar to one of the top selling laptops from Apple in 2024. So you still get a solid experience if you decided to get last year's model and for reference here's a side by side comparison versus my 35 inch ultra wide LG monitor and the IdeaPad Gaming 3 laptop at 100% on all of them. The Surface Pro 9 is clearly the winner by a good margin. Not to mention that you get Dolby Vision IQ support, 10-point multi-touch input, Gorilla Glass 5, and the Pixel Sense technology for the pen support. The only unusual thing about this display is the 3 by 2 aspect ratio, which is different from the 16 by 9 we got used to. Each one has its own pros and cons. For example, the 3 by 2 gives you more vertical space, which is better for apps like Excel or Outlook, but on the other hand, the 16x9 has more horizontal space, so opening multiple apps side by side or watching videos will be better. So you need to decide which one better suits your needs, but if you are planning to use an external display anyways, then it won't matter that much. So overall, the Surface Pro 9 display is high-end and still worth it in 2024. Number 3, the speakers. The Surface Pro 9 has great speakers that I didn't expect to be that loud and full considering its size, they sound even better than my gaming laptop, and here's a quick comparison. Number 4, the cameras. You get two cameras front and back. The front has a 1080p video resolution and I found it to deliver good results in video calls either in well-lit or low-light environments, but it's not meant for taking photos as the resolution is only 3.6 megapixels. In contrast, the back has a 10 megapixel photo resolution with autofocus and it can record videos up to 4K, plus the camera app gives you the ability to use the back camera to take panoramic photos, scan documents, QR codes, and more. Number 5, the detachable keyboard. Even though I'm not a big fan of small keyboards or trackpads, but if you are, this one is a great option when compared to similar products. The trackpad is very smooth and responsive, the keyboard is backlit, 
The key travel distance is good with minimal noise while typing. It's covered with a nice material. It protects your display from scratches. It can be easily attached using magnets. It also attaches to the front to slightly raise the keyboard for easier typing. And finally, has a dedicated compartment for the Surface Slim Pen 2 to store and charge it at the same time, which is very convenient. Number 6, Windows Hello. This is Microsoft's version of the Face ID and it's the same technology used in the latest 2024 model. From my experience, it works flawlessly every single time. No matter if you are in complete darkness or well-lit environment, it just works. It can be used to access your PC, fill in passwords, sign into your apps, and more. Number 7. The ability to connect an external 4K monitor at 120Hz refresh rate using one of the Thunderbolt 4 ports on the side, and if your monitor supports USB-C, all you need is a cable. But there are a couple of things I don't like about the I.O. of the Surface Pro 9 that I'm going to talk about in the last section. Number 8 and the last one in this list is the extremely convenient way to expand your storage. Under the stand, you will find a small cover that you can give a little push to get immediate access to the SSD, then use a screwdriver to remove this tiny little screw and replace your storage. This is the first time to see such an amazing and convenient feature. So that's it when it comes to the things that I like, which make it a strong competitor in 2024 in a lot of areas. But to be able to make a more thoughtful decision, let's talk about what's average. The only two things in this list are the performance and battery. Starting with the performance, from my testing, it works great with the Microsoft suite of apps, web browsing, attending meetings, and so on. But once you do heavy tasks like video editing and demanding games, that's when it shows its limits. The unit I have here is the 12th Gen Core i7 built on Intel Evo platform, which is the highest tier. The Intel Iris Xe integrated graphics card, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of storage. The specs are not bad, but it doesn't sound like a gaming or editing machine. Out of curiosity, I tried Adobe Premiere Pro to edit a 4K video, and the fan was running at full speed. The backside became uncomfortably warm, and it started to lag. It might be sufficient for light gaming and editing 1080p videos, but nothing more than this. Moving to the battery, there is nothing impressive about it, but it's not bad either. It usually gets me 4-5 to five hours of a screen on time on recommended settings when I use multiple apps simultaneously like Microsoft Edge to watch YouTube videos while downloading files in the background, randomly updating my Excel sheets, and checking emails every now and then. With about 8 hours of sleep time, which is not a full shutdown, so the apps remain loaded in the RAM. After all of this, I end the day with about 15-20% to 20 battery. Overall, this device is meant for average users, which it does well in 2024, but for more demanding workflow, you should look elsewhere. Now we made it to the last section, which will show you the things that are not so good about the Surface Pro 9. The first thing I didn't like is the rotation speed. It takes relatively longer than normal tablets to adjust the screen, which is a bit annoying. Secondly, it lacks a lot of ports. It doesn't have a 3.5mm headphone jack, no memory card reader, and no USB Type-A. All you get is a couple of USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, so you will definitely need a hub to get all the ports you might need in the future. You might also need the Surface Dock 2 if you are planning to use it with two external displays instead of only one, which will add extra cost and declutter to your setup. Third, it's not easy to use the Surface Pro 9 on your lap with the keyboard attached like normal laptops as it moves separately from the device. But I would say it's a minor issue as most of the time you will put it on your desk. Lastly, the device is heavy for one-handed use as it weighs between 883 and 878 grams depending on the model. So I found myself usually need to rest my hand on something while using it. So here's my final conclusion. If you need something portable for normal day-to-day -day tasks, the Surface Pro 9 is definitely a better value for money over the latest model as it will get you covered for years while saving few hundreds of dollars unless you need the extra performance boost that Microsoft shared in their keynote. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my long-term review for the Surface Pro 9 in 2024. Please let me know what do you think in the comments. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.